What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Talk with Vinny. So, with the Super Bowl being over, obviously the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did win. The final score was 31 to 9. So, obviously, the game actually wasn't as close as everyone kind of predicted it would be or everyone thought it would be. Um, you know, the Bucs were able to score a couple touchdowns in the second quarter, um, try to t and take a pretty big lead. And even in the second half, the Chiefs really just weren't able to get anything going offensively. Um, Obviously, they only scored nine points, so they weren't even able to get a touchdown. Um, and eventually, the Bucks were able to put a couple more scores together in the third, fourth quarter and kind of just pull away. And those last, you know, 10 minutes after that missed fourth down conversion, it was kind of the ball game. You kind of just have to run out the clock, essentially, even though there's 10 minutes left. Now, obviously, um, I think this is probably why everyone loves the game of football is because... If you were to replay that game, probably it's not going to be the outcome, 31-9, and right? Probably going to be a much closer ball game. Maybe the Chiefs even win it. Um, but when you have the NFL the way it's structured, it is just a one game, and whoever wins that game wins the game, you know? It's not like baseball or basketball where there's a series and, you know, the teams play each other five, six, seven times sometimes, and then the team who wins four of those games wins. It's not that way. Um, so obviously, if you're on the Chiefs' side, there are going to be a bunch of regrets, things you wish you could have done differently, especially looking at the game plan and the way the Bucks' game plan was against you and against your offense. So very quickly, I just want to get into some of the numbers. Um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is 26 of 49, 270 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. Kind of seems like he played a pretty bad game. But if you watch the game, he actually was pretty efficient um, throwing the ball considering the pressure that he had. I want to say he was pressured on about 52% of his dropbacks. Um, and just the receivers, when he made the ridiculous throws that only literally Patrick Mahomes could make, the receivers just didn't catch him. You know, there was one throw where he's rolling out to his left in the first quarter. He throws it to Tyreek Hill. Um, you know, as a right-handed quarterback, that is an insanely hard throw to make. And he hits Tyreek Hill right in the hands. Obviously a very tough ball um, to catch, but still catchable ball. Hits Tyreek Hill in his hands. And if he catches that, they go up. Um, they score a touchdown the first possession, which would have been very huge. I think it was the second possession. Um, you know, a couple other drops here and there. Travis Kelsey had one in the first half as well. And then they obviously the big one on fourth down in the fourth quarter with about 13 and a half minutes to go. Um, he's literally rolling out. I mean, there's two plays, right? The play before that on third down, he's rolling out and he throws a crazy throw where he's getting spun and he throws it to the corner of the end zone. A perfect throw. Obviously a very hard catch. Can't really fault the receiver for not catching that, but it's a very good throw considering the circumstances he's under. And then the very next play on fourth down, he's scrambling to his right, and he's literally throwing it side-armed, on the, almost on the ground, about to be sacked, and he throws it right over Devin White, right into the receiver's hands, or at least should have been in the receiver's hand, instead of heads him his face mask, and it's a turnover. And that, you know, at that point it was 31 to nine, um, but there was like, again, about 13, 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter. So had he caught that pass there, you score a touchdown, even if you just kick the extra point, right? You're now looking at a 16 to 31 ball game, which means you're down 15 with about 14 minutes to go. So you're still in the ball game, right? You get a stop and you get another score and all of a sudden it's a one possession ball game. And the um, Tampa Bay Bucks offense now has to play a little differently because they're no longer playing with a two, three score lead. They're in a very tight ball game where they're going to have to make some plays or you know Patrick Mahomes on the other side is going to probably make the plays that need to be made. For Tom Brady, his numbers were actually pretty pretty average, right? 21 to 29, 201 passing, 201 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, right? Just very efficient, um, which is kind of what I had talked about in my previous video. Um, the top end talent all came from Kansas City side, right? From Chris Jones, Tyron Matthew, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, um, Tyreek Hill, but the depth was where the Bucks shined. Um, they had just a better overall team, and like I said, I just felt like having the better overall team usually gets it done. Um, and that's what happened, right? Um, even though Brady wasn't spectacular, he made the plays that were there, right? He used some of his weapons, mostly Gronk this game, um, but the, some of the weapons, um, obviously with Mike Evans, his stat line is one catch for 31 yards, but obviously he was way more involved in that right towards the end of the first half. I believe it was him on both on both penalties that drew the big yardage penalties for the pass interference that gave them that score, right? So even though Mike Evans' stat line is one catch for 31 yards, right, he doesn't get credit for the pass interference yardage, but 
you know, he accounted for almost 100 yards in the game, right, when you factor in those two penalties. So obviously the game, you know, was the Bucks because, you know, just the team, right, they were able to run the ball. They kind of stopped Kansas City from running, um, and just their team was just the better team. Now, there's some interesting notes, obviously, for Kansas City. They had 11 penalties for 121 yards, or 120 yards, excuse me. It's tough to win a ball game with that many penalty yards, whereas the Bucks just had four penalties for 39 yards. Um, third down conversions, both of them were actually terrible. Um, the Chiefs were 3 for 13 on third down, but the Bucks were 4 of 12. So really not much better. So obviously the ball game really just came down to the Bucks game plan and Todd Bowles, his game plan against the Kansas City Chiefs offense, which worked well. Now we knew going into the game that the Chiefs both left and right tackles were not going to play. Um, so you knew that could be a factor and obviously it was. The pass rush was pretty much all day. Um, I did see a stat from Next Gen Stats that said that Patrick Mahomes had ran for 497 yards trying to run away from the rush before he either A, threw the ball, or B, got sacked. And that was the most of any quarterback in any game all season. Now, obviously, the interesting part of the game plan, right, I don't want to I don't want to get too in-depth with it, but the Tampa Bay Bucks played two-man for 82% of the snaps. So if you're not familiar with coverages and defenses, two-man is essentially just kind of man-to-man -man defense where you have two safeties deep, and really the goal of the defense is to make sure you don't get beat deep and you don't give up the big plays, right? You could also play a cover two defense if you want to switch it to a zone where you have the two safeties still deep, kind of different concepts. Like I said, I don't want to really get into it in, in this video, um, but essentially what they did was the game plan was to make sure to keep everything in front of them, right? Defensively, don't allow anyone to go deep, which again, when Tyreek Hill goes for 200 yards in the first quarter, in the first matchup, obviously the game plan was to make sure that doesn't happen again. And, you know, the game plan kind of worked to perfection. Um, I think obviously from Kansas City's side, if you're kind of looking at how the game transpired and how it played out, I think if you're them, you probably wish you would have ran the ball a little more. Um, if you look at Clyde Edwards Hilaire's numbers, he had nine carries for 64 yards. He averaged 7.1 a clip. So that is very efficient. Um, if you would have given him the ball a little bit more, you would have probably been able to run them out of that cover two man, right? Because when you're playing two, two high safeties, you only have seven guys in the box. And if you're able to run on a defense that is putting just seven men in the box, eventually what happens is the defense has to adjust by putting that eighth man in the box. And when they put that eighth man in the box, now you just have a single high safety, and now you're maybe able to get some big plays down the field. On one hand, you want to definitely credit the Buccaneers off or Buccaneers defense and Todd Bowles. The game, the game plan they had was terrific. But on the other hand, I think if you're Kansas City and you watch the game film and you really realize what happened, you have to kind of go into that game and and say, man, like there was a lot of mistakes made from obviously some drop passes and stuff like that. But just mistakes in the game plan, right? You need to run the ball when they're playing a lot of two high safeties. You got to get them to either a bring a guy, third guy in the box, or you know if you're just going to have to dink and dunk down the field to get it done, that's just what you're going to have to do. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the points that you put up on the board. Doesn't matter how they get there. With that being said, obviously this is the last game of the year, so that kind of sucks, right? No more football for several months. Obviously, don't worry about this channel though. I'm going to have a bunch of other videos, right? We're going to be talking about the Carson Wentz trade, Deshaun Watson. Right, we'll go into free agency, my top free agents, and obviously you got the draft coming in April. Right, I'll do some mock drafts for you and just my thoughts generally on drafting players and, and that whole aspect. And, and that kind of what will keep me going for the off season until football season starts up again. Hopefully next season, by the time next season rolls around, there will be more, a lot more fans in the stands. Right, and they'll go back to a more normal season, right? the whole pandemic and you know congratulations right to the nfl for even having the season and getting through it right and having a couple hiccups but still being able to play the games and get through the whole season um but i think it's obviously more enjoyable for everyone when there's fans in the stands right you're able to hear the crowd noise and it affects the opposing team and all that so thank you guys so much for watching the video um and i look forward to making some more videos and engaging with you guys during the off season thank you so much